So, Norway, Gote, welcome to Barcelona. Hi. Thank you. Thank you. Hi. It's not your first time in Spain, I guess, isn't it? No. <laughs> but, but first time uh, as a bat. No, I actually played in Cartagena in 2005 or something. Long yeah. time ago. Long yeah. time ago. And you're coming here with uh, kind of a gift for the Spanish audience because you're performing La 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 in Norwegian. We just heard that. How was it? How was the idea behind that? <laughs> Well, we um, we couldn't manage to come to Madrid, uh, so then we've just put our brain together and um, what could we, we have, do? What yeah, could we, we have to could compensate, we give, yeah. Yeah. give you a little gift for sorry for not coming, <laughs> and uh, it's going to be yeah, it's going to be really exciting to do it tonight to see how the audience reacts. In Madrid, it was crazy. I'm again, I can just can't wait to see it here live. Yeah, we saw <laughs> yeah. it on Instagram. It was crazy for us too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So let's talk about your song from Eurovision. Let's talk about Ulveham a little bit. Yeah. So, like reading about it, it's such a story because it comes from a like, medieval ballad. So, can you please tell us a bit more behind the sto about the story behind it? Um, you also had to have like a little like, lyric change yeah. on it. So, yeah. can you please tell us about like composing the song and creating this and the inspiration behind it? Yeah. Well, it's yeah. a it's a long song, uh -huh. uh, medieval ballad. It's a song about uh, liberation on your own terms. So there's a jealous stepmother that casts a spell on her stepdaughter, turns her into a wolf, and hey, the wolf has to roam the woods for eternal time. And the stepmother says the only way you can get free is to drink your own brother's blood, which is quite a perverse thing to say. Do that and get free. Um, but then later, the daughter, uh, now a wolf, is in the woods, and the stepmother goes there and they meet each other, and the wolf rips her heart out, and the wolf eats it, and then it turns out the stepmother was pregnant with her half-brother, so then technically she was drinking her brother's blood. So, she got free on her own terms, not, not by the rules of freedom set by the oppressor. So it's a song about liberation. Now that's just the verses. <laughs> now, over to the chorus. <clears throat> chorus, there's no words in the chorus. It's just a calling, a animal calling, uh, which is a um, technique from many countries, but this is a spe specific Norwegian style. Uh, and it's just words, vowels, sounds, melodies that should resonate throughout the mountains and the hills to get the animals to the farm. And in this song you can say the calling is a calling for liberation. It could, it could be. be. It could be that. Because what happened when those two things were put together, there was this really strong emotion that came that is very open, very difficult to define. But we knew that this is the song we need to participate in Eurovision with. Yeah. And just have that feeling flow over and convey that feeling. So that's, that's what we are doing really, conveying that strong emotion. Because that's also, also what I was going to ask you, like, um, the song, the staging itself, does it represent like the whole fable or just like the end, the liberation moment? Do you feel like, it, did you, were you trying to tell the, like the full story or just like the, the moment of the end of it? Well, we're trying to, to uh, tell the emotions in the song and everything in that staging is, uh, we have thought about, it's, a, it's, um, it's not coincidence anything is not a coincidence no. and, and, and then the meaning behind everything yeah so it's very specific because you have the laser that yes. confines Gunil so exactly. she's trapped in there and then visually during the act it rips open and then you get the nature element she is in the center of the storm we are in the storm going crazy but yeah. she's in the center and uh, then you have the wind you have the fog you have the physical moving objects and I uh, going also around have this uh, this uh, project live on stage with this uh, spinning around, yeah. you know, it's it's not making it easier for me to sing, <laughs> definitely, <It's, laughs> but it gives me something else that gives uh, this um, this true fight yeah. that also give uh, this soul and energy to the singing. Yes. So, okay, maybe it makes it a bit more difficult to sing, but this gives this. But at some moments, it also looks like it is a real project. It's a real, yeah, something something real going on with yeah. your body there, and it's, so it's it's important because you get very you get aware and you're present and you channel the song even better. Yeah. Did you get dizzy singing it on the first for the first time? You get dizzy there in the. In the no. I don't know why, because I easily get dizzy, yeah. but on the, in that, I don't. 
<laughs> there is something happening. I don't know. <laughs> it's adrenaline or something. I don't know. So like, yeah. when when you were thinking like, okay, let's create the staging, and we're going to have you spinning around. Yeah. How was your reaction? Like, oh my god, it's going to be <laughs> cool. I was yes. You were gonna go, we we're gonna do that. <laughs> That's <laughs> That's actually brave of you, <laughs> to be honest. It's also like a very demanding vocally, so like a very vocally demanding song, isn't it? Yeah, it is. It's always a challenge, and it's always developing in my and it's uh, always something to reach for. So um, yeah, I never get bored of singing that. <laughs> so. Just to state the name, the the name of the of the herding chant is called Kulok, isn't it? Kul yeah, Kulok. Kulok. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Means means a cow calling yeah. in a way. Uh -huh. uh, yeah. And do you do that? Like, um, have you sung any other songs with that as well? Or? Yes, I have. Uh, um, but uh, it's not a very uh, well documented way of singing in Norway. It's like, the, uh, but it was a huge part of the the daily life. We know, but it's not very well documented. But we have some, so we know. Um, partly how it was, but also it was very different from person to person, so it was very uh, individual how you how you did the callings, and and therefore also I'm doing it in my way, um, it's a personal thing how you how you do your calling, if you know what I mean, so yeah. yeah. <laughs> so you've also, throughout your career, you have already been like um, recording like uh, some of your music uh, always uh, tells the story of the culture of Norway and, and stories from your country as well. Well, yeah. it's taking you like 20 years of a career to finally come to showcase that at Eurovision. <laughs> like, have you ever been approached before? I'm sure you have. Well, yeah, uh, but there was some maturity now, uh, both uh, both in the world and us. <laughs> and also we have to say we had we haven't like had a career uh, for 20 years. We had a 12 year 12 break. Yeah. So in yeah. a way, we came back in 2017 yeah. and. We From there young. on, yeah. Very young. She was 15 when you started, and I was 17. Yeah. Yeah. I'm very, I'm very glad that I'm not 20 years old when I'm doing this. So I really feel that this was the right time to do yeah. it. And we, and we had the right song as well. And I think we, uh, we are older and matured more, so we are, we are more grounded. And then we really can uh, uh, take in what's really going on and appreciate the whole. Uh, dynamic of Eurovision as well because there's so many people investing their time and like yeah. you and all the audience uh, and we're all creating this together and I think when you're younger you can just uh, it's all the buzz and it you know but when we really appreciate meeting you everyone and all the attention and all the love for music and for each other that we experience here yeah, I mean, just uh, not taking it for granted you know no. uh, and uh, since we've been uh, working so hard and so long we're always like working with the press and stuff by ourselves so it's really nice to be here and get yeah. all that attention and, we, and really appreciate yeah. it yeah and we and we had the right song now with a yeah, yeah. strong emotion which tells a long story in three minutes and it's not every day you have such a song so when we had that song okay let's do it yes and i also feel that we have never been better actually it's like yeah matured yeah. and uh, um it's really we're so grounded and so uh, my voice has all not been that good as it is now, actually. So, it takes a while to like perfect this vocal power that you have. So, you're also singing in Norwegian for the first time in since 20, 2006, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, how did it feel? Did you ever think like maybe people are not going to respond to it because it's in Norwegian or no? Because uh, Gotes project has always been singing in uh, of course in Norwegian but taking those like cultural gems from our ancient past like we sort of channel the northern spirit in a way and uh, many of the words and the, is very archaic and old so I mean uh, many people in Norway don't understand the lyrics either no. so it's more like mystical vowels that that channels the spirit and and the emotion that we're out after so for us it's of course it's in Norwegian yeah and also the second I start to sing in English <laughs> it, it's it sounds totally different then it starts sounding like pop music or <laughs> I, this, no it's I lose my personality in in if I change yeah. the, the language actually and, and in Eurovision I mean uh, it's um, I mean, originality is very much appreciated, so then we would really, we're really proud of bringing something original and unique uh, to Eurovision. Definitely nothing like any other thing on the competition. Now, let's talk about the semi-final, you're performing next to last. So like, 
that's like the golden spot for yeah. to perform at. Yeah. Are you feeling nervous about it? It's actually the same spot that we had in the Norwegian finals, yeah. second to last, and the number after us. It's it's more like. A, show number right yeah. but we have a, like a passionate uh, pa number so i think that contrast is very good so uh, yeah we are very happy with that yes yeah. so final thing you have lots of new fans across europe thanks to eurovision do you have a message for all them that's your camera <laughs> <laughs> thank you for having us in your community yes and yes yes <laughs> yes <laughs> and you. hope seeing you guys in malmo and love the music <laughs> Thank you. Thank you guys. Thank you so much. <laughs>